Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited that you're going to be joining me today as we dive in and talk about fractions. Now, depending on where you teach, your standards might be a little bit different. If you are a Texas teacher, the standards for teaks in second grade, you cover halves, fourths, and eighths. If you teach in a common core state, they're a little bit different and you teach halves, thirds, and fourths. Like, why can't it all just be the same, right? But today we're gonna dive in and talk about fractions and I'm gonna be sharing three different activities that I have used in my own classroom to introduce and reinforce fr fractional concepts. So let's get started. Hey all, if you're new around here, my name is Marcy Bernithi and I am the teacher author behind SaddleUpForSecondGrade.com and if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm kind of a math nerd. Like I geek out about it. So today we're going to be talking about fractions and each time I introduce a new concept or I start a new unit, I always create an anchor chart with my students. So we always create one whole group together. But what I like about this is that we create our anchor charts together. Anchor charts are not something that are just meant for the teacher to pre-make on their own time. They're actually meant to be created together as a class. And so what I decided to do so that everyone is involved is, so not only are we creating our whole group anchor chart together, but for each unit that we did, my students would complete a mini anchor chart that looks exactly the same in their math journal. So before creating our chart, all I would have on it for our big whole group one is I would have the title and then I would have like go ahead and have um, these columns created with number of equal parts, model and name, and so forth. I would have my examples, but everything that can be written out, I don't ever pre-fill out information beforehand. We complete everything together and so then that way when our fraction unit is over and maybe I don't have the anchor chart displayed anymore, they always have a mini one in their journal to reference and look back on. So this activity and all the other activities that I'm gonna show you, these are part of my second grade guided math unit. If you're interested in checking that out, you can get that in the link below. So the first activity that I'm gonna share with you is called Play-Doh fractions. And so what kids are going to do is they are going to create various shapes and then practice dividing or partitioning them into various equal parts. So all you need is a pan of Play-Doh. Typically I say that two students can share one can of Play-Doh and then some sort of like tool you can easily just give your students plastic knives. Those work just as great. I'm just using what I have lying around the house. So let me show you how it works. So as I mentioned, each kid is going to need a can of Play-Doh, something to divide their shapes with so they could use some sort of Play-Doh tool or they can just use a simple plastic knife. And if you want to get really fancy, you can use pre made cookie cutters so that students can make various shapes or you can just have them use their knife or play-doh tool to form and create their own shapes so what i would do is you don't have to have like these pre-made task strips but i'm just going to use this to show you and make it a little bit easier if we are doing this activity whole group I would probably have the class do the same activity. So each kid is going to be making the same shape. If I'm doing this in a small group setting, depending on my students, I would more than likely give them a different task strip. And so each kid is going to be completing a different shape. What they are going to do is you are going to give them a shape to create. So whether they're reading a task strip or you just call out a shape for them to make. So they're gonna take their Play-Doh and they are going to build the shape. If it is a circle 
What I love about this is you can actually use the Play-Doh lid kind of like as a mold or a cookie cutter. And then kids could mash out their Play-Doh. And if it's not completely perfect, then they can use their Play-Doh lid to mash down and create a circle. So once their shape has been made, then I am going to have them use their tool to divide, or if we're focusing on vocabulary, you could use the word partition, and you are going to have them to divide their shape into equal parts. So like this example says, make a circle, divide it into eight equal parts. So together, we would discuss and talk about what are the first steps we need to take in order to complete that. So first, we would need to divide our circle in half. Then we're going to divide it into fourths. Once we've divided it into fourths, then we can move on and divide it into eighths. Then once that is completed, what's great about that is they can take their Play-Doh, they can mash it up, and then you can give them a new shape to create. So this one says, make a rectangle, divide the rectangle into four equal parts. So if you have cookie cutters, you could easily do that. Or if you want students to practice making a rectangle, then they can do that with their Play-Doh as well. Now, my Play-Doh shape might not be the greatest, but we are gonna try here. There we go, it's not too bad. All right, so once they have built their shape, then it says divide the rectangle into four equal parts. So you might have kids create it a certain way, or maybe you let them create it on their own and see how each kid might divide their shape differently. Something else you're doing or something else that you could do. So for example, let's say that maybe you didn't have them erase the shape that they previously built. So like, let's go back to our circle for a minute. It was divided into eighths. I know that's not a perfect circle, but we're just going to pretend that it is for right now. And so now that they have two shapes created, you might talk about, okay, which fraction has smaller parts? Which fraction has larger parts? And you can use that to have a mathematical conversation about the more parts a fraction has, the smaller they will be. The less parts a fraction has, the larger they will be. And you can open that up for mathematical conversations. The second activity that I am going to show you is another really easy hands-on way to practice partitioning and then putting fractions back together. So for this, I just call it folding fractions. All you need are just some simple shapes. I like to use rectangles, squares, and circles. And so I'm just, what I'm gonna do for this activity is you're just gonna give each kid one shape of each they're gonna cut them out. So then what you're gonna have them do is for one shape, you're gonna have them fold it in half. Another shape, you're gonna have them fold it into fourths. And then another shape, they might fold it into thirds or eighths or whatever your standard might be. So you are going to have, you're going to model first and show them how to fold their shape in half and then when they open it up they can see the line of how their shape is now divided into equal parts so you're going to do this with all of your shapes and then let me show you the next step once they folded their shapes then i'm going to have them take their pencil and actually trace over the lines so that they can see how the shape is divided so the circle was divided in half. We did our square into fourths. And then my rectangle was divided into eighths. 
So first they're going to fold the shape, then they are going to trace the lines that they created. The next step is they are actually going to cut the fractions apart. Once they cut the fractions apart, then they are going to put them back together and it's going to look something like this. So I actually have a model for eighths. I have one for fourths and I have one for one half. So you can have them show and create multiple shapes to represent different fractions, or you could have them just do one of each, and then maybe they make a three column chart on their piece of paper. But so what they did is, first they folded their shape, then they drew the line to divide it, they cut the shapes apart, then I have them like mix their pieces up really good, and then they have to put their shapes back together. And then this is just plain like colored copy paper or you could use construction paper. They have to glue them back together. And then to take it one step further, they had to label each part. So that's a simple hands-on way that you can practice multiple fractional concepts in one activity. It's perfect for small group or whole group lessons. The third activity that I'm gonna show you is another simple one, and I like to call it pick the fraction. This is something that I would prefer to do in small groups rather than whole group instruction. So what you're gonna need is just a set of red and blue linking cubes. Now, you don't, you could use different shapes, you could use different colors if you wanted. Um, I'm gonna show you this activity with a pre-made recording sheet from my second grade fraction unit but this is something you don't have to have this recording sheet that I'm gonna show you with to complete the activity. So you're just gonna want at your small group table or you want each student to have maybe like a tub or a cup or something that you can put cubes inside of. And then inside the cube you want, or inside the cup, you want to have red and blue linking cubes. And I just threw in a random amount of each color. So let me show you how it's gonna work. So for this, each of my students would have their pick the fraction recording sheet, and then whatever two colors you're using, have them have that, those two colors, markers or crayons, um, matte pencil, something like that. So our first one says, choose four cubes, how many are red? So without looking, they're gonna put their hand into the cup and they're gonna pull out four cubes. One, two, three, four. And then I am actually going to have them draw the fraction that they created. So they picked four, Two are red and two are blue. You could have them draw squares, you could have them do dots, however you want them to do it. We picked four cubes. Our question says, how many are red? Two cubes are red. So when they write their answer, they are gonna write the fraction that represents the number of red cubes. So in second grade, their standard is to write the fraction in word form. So they would write two fourths are red. If you're not using a recording sheet like this, you could always just have your kids do it on whiteboards. Then they are going to do it again. I'm gonna put them in, I'm gonna like mix the cubes up really good. The next one says choose eight cubes, how many are red? So they're not going to look in the cup and we're gonna pick eight. So from there, they are going to draw the fraction that they created. We have five red and three blue. This time I'm just gonna draw dots to make it quicker. Our question asks, how many are red? One, two, three, four, five. So they would write the fraction five eighths 
are red. And then you would just repeat this process as time allows. So there you have it. There were three hands-on activities that you can use in your classroom to practice and reinforce fractional concepts. If you are looking for more fraction ideas, I have put in the description of this video, I have linked a blog post that I have on my website where you can find even more fraction ideas along with the links to my fraction units as well. As always, I would love for you to give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. We come out with new weekly videos every week, and I hope you learned something valuable from this, and I will see you guys next week for another fun, engaging math video. You guys have a blessed one, and I'll see you later. Bye!